My grandma Peggy made my mom's clothes. She indulged in 1950s style paddle pushers, those crop pants, and she smoked cigarettes. My other grandma, Grandma Catherine, she smoked moose hide. She stretched and softened their skin and made leather into coats and mitts for my dad. Those women and my mom raised me in a culture of beating, sewing, mending, and making. I had hand-to-hand -hand uh, moccasins when I was a little girl. And the, one of the first things I made was a blossom-inspired hat. I was eight. I love to play dress up and make stuff. I've been doing it for 27 years. I am now a designer and artistic director working in fashion and costume. And I think a lot about how people perceive fashion and how fashion connects you and me and the earth. People see fashion mostly in three ways, uh, function, cost, and style. We're looking for an outfit that expresses our personality, that suits our lifestyle, and comes with an affordable price tag. But I've come to learn that fashion also expresses our values. And what we wear and what we eat are probably the two most political decisions we make every single day. The fashion industry also has a certain set of values. We see it in their practices. You've probably seen uh, sensational news headlines broadcasting another fashion industry tragedy. And it sucks to know that some of what we purchase supports those industry malpractices. But let's look at the industry straight in the eye, because we're not scared, starting with the environment. The manufacturing and production of fashion is the second largest polluting industry in the world. Pesticides and chemicals go into our water and onto our bodies. In fact, 20% of all water pollution is caused by textile dyeing alone. And that's not to mention the carbon footprint that comes along with the shipping of our garments. The fashion industry also has a reputation for mistreating people. Of the 80 billion pieces of garments produced every year, most of those are produced in cramped factories by people who are paid substandard wages. Less than 10% of those people are a part of a union that can protect their rights. Finally, the fashion industry is also known for misrepresenting history and exploiting culture to create trends and sell products. Some of my earliest memories of seeing Indians on TV were the headcount of Indians killed by Bugs Bunny and Disney's Pocahontas, of course. One of my first purchases that I made on my own was a Princess Pocahontas uh, pajama set. On the cover of it, on the front of it, was a picture of Pocahontas, and she's wearing a skimpy buckskin outfit, and she appears to be talking to a raccoon. <laughs> Imagine, as a little native girl, I see myself reflected in either the savage Indian brave or the sexy Indian princess. Oh, to be victimized by such poor taste. But this is a serious issue. The, these stereotypes and stereotypes like these are fertile ground for racism, hate, and oppression. Not to mention, it is false advertising for indigenous fashion. Urban Outfitters is a prime example. Maybe you saw their Navajo hipster panties and flasks. They tried to copy Navajo, traditional Navajo woven designs. And then they slapped the Navajo name on it to sell their product. In other words, they stole intellectual property and used the name of an entire nation of people to make money. When they could have called a Navajo designer and paid them to join their team. After all of this, 
we don't even get paid for the misuse of our image and the theft of our art. The fashion industry isn't always so cognizant of people or the earth. And that's why it's so important uh, to think about the choices that we make and where we come from and the teachings that come with us are formative to how we're contributing to the world we're in today. And I think back to my elders. When I was a little girl, we went to community feasts and the potluck was full with stews and sweets. And as the thanks was being given for that food, the elders would remind us, we know those fry bread look tasty, but don't let your eyes get bigger than your stomach. I waited and I took one piece of fry bread. And that's a, that's a value that I carry with me to this day. Only take what I need. And we're also taught our values. When I was a little girl, I wanted Barbie. And for Christmas, Santa Claus brought me a massive Native American doll, nearly the same size as I was. And I eventually learned, eventually learned, that I don't need to be complacent in what the mainstream is marketing at me. And it's values like these that help guide me through how I work today and how I'm working in fashion. I knew that I wanted to create beautiful, wearable art and practice ancient techniques and sell pants. I also wanted to break down misconceptions that indigenous fashion is only mythologized in museums or appropriated by mainstream massive corporations. And as I emerged in the industry, I found other designers who face similar challenges. And we have a voice, and we're discovering our platform. We are carving out space so we can see our work reflected in the eyes of the public. A few years ago, our team launched Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto. We brought together at the intersection of fashion, art, and culture, here's some images, Main, mainstream fashion, indigenous designers, and traditional practices. In our first year, one of our artists and designers, Tanya Larson, presented her work of dentalium beads, moose hide, and muskox horn from the Canadian Arctic. Her last model she sent out came out clutching their shoulders. And as they spread open their arms, spread full wingspan like a hawk, across the front in dentalium beads read, protect the caribou. At Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto, designers can freely express themselves on our runway, in exhibit, in a market, and in panel discussions and hands-on workshops. Next year, we are presenting and we're going to be tanning deer hides at the Harborfront Center. Familial practices, intergenerational stories and knowledge, values and truths, and the exchange between one another are the threads that link how we're creating fashion today. And we want to share our art with you. We want to welcome you in so you have the opportunity to purchase work from the people who are making it. Let me introduce you to a few of the designers that we work with who are a part of our Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto family. Neil Perkins, creates stunning Haudenosaunee raised beadwork and summery floral dresses. I got to really work closely with Neo when actually she helped me with one of my fashion shows in Montreal. She brought her daughter to be a part of my show and wore one of the most important pieces in my collection. 
She's from Aquistosne, which is about four hours east of the city. Sky Paul, my sister, she's a mom also. She runs Running Fox Beads. She's known for creating Sailor Jerry style patches out of embroidered and peyote stitched beads. After my nephew Towns goes down for a nap, that's when she finally gets to work across from the crib. There's always a monthly lineup for her online restock of all of her patches and her earrings. Section 35 is a streetwear brand by Justin Lewis. I love seeing the pictures of his family in his Instagram feed. I saw the, I saw the rise of his work through the social commentary he made with appropriated logos like Coca-Cola. And I really, re I love and remember the one logo across the front was emblazed with fuck colonialism. <laughs> and we're not alone. There are designers and indigenous designers in Vancouver, in Calgary, Regina, Ottawa, New York, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Mexico, uh, Winnipeg, White Horse, everywhere. Indigenous designers are everywhere. When you're purchasing work from a designer, you know their manufacturing conditions. And you know their practices. You know that they're, they're creating hand-woven textiles, using natural dyes, and that's gonna have a circular impact on the environment. And when you're purchasing clothes from a designer, you know that you're gonna be wearing culturally authentic clothing that has meaning. And those are some of the reasons why what you wear is one of the most political decisions you make every day. And this part of the fashion industry that we're a part of, we see our values in a different way. We have different values about the environment, about the economy, people, culture. And since launching Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto, I think about how simple the economy can actually be. When I was a little girl, when I was a toddler, my first pair of moccasins, they came from a woman at the Ottawa powwow. They were made from hand-smoked moose. And my dad traded one of his paintings for my new little shoes. It's so simple. Today I'm surrounded by intricate, meaningful fashion. And I save up and I buy it. And yes, purchasing from a local designer is going to cost more. It's going to take longer to make. But you'll also love those pants more. And you're going to look awesome wearing them. And they'll probably last longer. It has a better impact on the environment. And your, design, your new designer friend is going to make a livable wage. And those are values that I can stand behind. So, who are you wearing? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.